In our last segment, we looked at religious music from the Renaissance period. Now let's look at a popular style of music. In France, we had the chanson, which is um, the French popular form. So if you're interested in that, you can go take a look at some of that. But the one that's most commonly heard even today from this period of time is the madrigal. So the madrigal comes from Italy and it is generally speaking a uh, fairly light-hearted kind of music, although not all. Um, and it tends to have lots of tra-la-las and things like that in it that contribute to that light-hearted sort of feeling. The text could be about pretty much anything, but common things would be love, of course. We're talking Italy. They, they love their love stories. It might be political in nature, uh, sort of um, satire even. So lots of different kinds of texts. Most of the ones that we hear today do have that sort of romantic, lovey kind of feeling to it. Uh, we also see lots of songs that feature shepherds and shepherdesses because that's sort of considered a, a lovely little romantic idea. So the madrigal itself is usually sung a cappella. In the cases of the uh, piece that we're going to listen to right now, this is by a men's group, so um, a cappella men. And the texture can be a lot of different things, as we'll see as we examine one piece in more detail in a minute. It might be polyphonic, it might be homophonic, it might be um, monophonic. So lots of different textures as we move the voices around. These were um, extremely popular in Italy, and as we'll see, they even became very popular in England. So we're going to take a look here at a video of the King Singers, which is a, a British group that's still in existence today. This video is a little older, you can tell by the clothing, but it, it's part of their Madrigal Mystery Tour, a, a sort of play on, on the Beatles there, where they did a history of the Madrigal. So if you wanted to watch the entire thing and learn everything you could stand to know about Madrigals, you're welcome to it. Although the subtitles are in Italian, you can hear the English talking. Um, so they're going to do this song, and he's going to tell, to tell us what this piece is about. But basically, it's one of those um, boy and girl sorts of things, except that in this case, the father doesn't want her to marry the person that she wants to marry. So as you listen to it, just sort of focus on the style of the music and how it's moving, how the voices are interacting with each other. Don't worry that you don't know what the text itself is because you've got the general idea, and that's really the most important part. So here we have the King Singers with La Bella Franceschina. All right, so we have all these lovely Italian madrigals. There was a lot of interchange between England and, and Italy, a lot of composers going back and forth, and the, the English discovered that they also really liked this particular style of music. So we have a vast body of English madrigals. Same general sort of style, but now we're singing in English. So we're gonna take a look at a madrigal written by a composer named John Farmer. So nice, clean English name, we know he's English. And the title of this piece is Fair Phyllis I Saw, or sometimes we just stretch it out to Fair Phyllis I Saw Sitting All Alone. One of the elements that's really important in madrigals is the idea of word painting. We talked about that briefly when we did our sort of speed tour through the periods. And this is where a composer takes a piece of text and tries to write music that represents the meaning of that text. So we had falling or rising, that sort of idea. So we're gonna to listen to Fair Phyllis. And we're just, it's a very short piece, so I'm gonna play it through once, just straight through. And then we're gonna go back and look at how Farmer did some really clever word painting within this piece. Feeding a flock near to the mountainside. Feeding a flock near to the mountainside. She was missing, she was missing when he found her. Oh, then they fell a kissing, oh, then they fell a kissing, kissing, a kissing, kissing oh, then they fell a kissing. She was missing, she was missing when he found her. 
All right, so here we have a charming little story of a shepherd and shepherdess, Phyllis and Amentus are shepherds, and she's out um, by herself. She gets lost, he has to find her, all that sort of thing. So it's your, your classic little mini love story in a very short period of time. So what are our, our examples of word painting here? The, this um, YouTube video is nice because it actually shows you the music, so that's kind of cool. If you can read music, that's great. If not, you can still get a visual sense here. So let's think about the text. Our opening text, Fair Phyllis I saw sitting all alone. So what Farmer did to illustrate her being all alone is that this is sung by one voice. So it's that sort of subtle. The characters alone, the singers alone, and then we have everybody else come in. And each time we have that line, Phyllis alone, she's alone. Hi. In this part, they're talking about um, the other shepherds are trying to find her because she's disappeared and they don't know where she's gone. And if you can imagine that if that were the case and you were trying to find something, somebody that was lost, things can get a little chaotic, right? Everybody's running around trying to find her. And even in the music here, we get that sense of chaos. Everybody's running off in a different direction. So again, sort of subtle, but it's an example of um, using word painting there. Let's move over now to um, where they start looking for her. And they're going up and down, up and down, up and down. Listen what happens in the music there. So it's like up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. The melody goes up and down, and up and up and up, down and all over the place. And every time that we have that text, the melody does something very similar to that. So we have the sort of subtle, I'm alone, so I have a solo voice, the perhaps even more subtle, we're looking for her and we have this chaotic polyphonic texture going, and then the bit more obvious up and down, up and down, up and down sort of thing. So as you listen to music from this particular style period and this type of piece, especially if they're singing in English where you can know what they're saying, listen for those kinds of examples. Listen for words that could be illustrated in music and try to figure out how the composer made that work. So madrigals, English, Italian, word painting. Those are the three big things to remember about madrigals and hopefully you'll get to hear some live in performance.